Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you out to Springfield First Baptist Church this morning. It's good to be back with y'all. And Randy, I appreciate you doing such a fine, fine job last week. And uh, uh, thank you so much for, for doing that. And uh, But it, it's good to be, it's, all, it's good to be away for a little bit, but it's always good to be, get back home. Uh, I found out that my sister-in-law likes air conditioning better than my wife. And that's saying a lot. Uh, so I spent part of the week about Bro's death, but I, I have recovered. And uh, but uh, I told uh, told my family next time I'll take a bargain, a coat, something. I, I will not freeze on our next trip. Uh, we mentioned several for for prayer before we got started this morning. I repeat these for our Facebook friends. Uh, Remember Jamie Allen as she recovers with an ankle injury, Larry Bullard and Miss Wilma as they recover for, with some health concerns, the Royce John family, uh, Erica Shook, uh, Gary Howard is supposed to have a pacemaker put in tomorrow, Haley Barkley's a young lady that uh, uh, had a stroke and I think she's in the hospital in Birmingham. Uh, remember Jackie's coworker. He's recovering at home, but he had a health scare the other day. Uh, Miss Mary Thigpen, uh, the loss of her son, Rich. Uh, I want you to remember the Brad Clunch family. We have mentioned him for prior for some time, and uh, this past week I got a message that he was doing much worse, and uh, got a text this morning from Anita. Uh, Brad is going to heaven. Pray for us. So. Uh, it's just a matter of time with him. Uh, one of the first things I did at, uh, as principal of Legacy Christian Academy, James and Nina, was introduce Brad Clunch to Marty Gray. And uh, Marty was there at a run that we had and a uh, fundraiser. And he sent, was able to send Brad some of the materials for of, uh, Christ over cancer. And uh, they were so thankful to be introduced to him. and. But he's uh, been battling cancer, been battling heart problems, and y'all remember his family. Uh, Peggy Springer is a friend of ours. Uh, need to remember her. Uh, Miss Glendora walked in this morning with a walker. And uh, I, mean, I reminded her of uh, after her kidney surgery, I was standing at the gate at my spot at the home football games, and here they came. They just got home from Atlanta, and she was uh, wanting to see some football. And uh, she came in, looked at me, and said, Jimmy's got a new woman. <laughs> well, yeah. Jimmy's got a, a, a new woman again, a walking woman. And uh, remember, remember them as she continues to recover and get gets used to walking around again. Uh, thank you for your prayers for me. I uh, went to the doctor Friday and uh, going to be something that they watch. They've got me on some medication. I go back in six months and uh, have my levels checked again. And hopefully they'll be the same, if not lower. And uh, because he, he talked about some things that uh, if it's not, uh, so Help me pray that those numbers stay where they at or, or lower, get lower. And uh, Miss Amy went to the doctor uh, a few weeks ago, and some of her levels are are off. And so uh, they've taken her off of her medication, and she's uh, going to go back in a couple of weeks and get some blood work done to see if the if it's the medicine or what it is. And so y'all help us pray uh, about that. Uh, our country, most everybody here, most everybody watching on Facebook knows what's going on in our country, how we need God to intervene. Uh, this virus is still uh, overwhelming, and other things are still overwhelming, and uh, we just need to touch from God above to, to settle everything. And uh, continue to remember our church, that we would uh, be uh, who... We, we need to be uh, for our community, for, for each other. 
uh, remember uh, Wednesday night we uh, said that over the five Sundays in July we'd be looking at uh, four of them would be looking at Acts 2.42 and uh, I think uh, this coming Wednesday night we'll be looking at the Apostles' Doctrine. This past week we looked at the word steadfastly, how steadfastly it hinges upon all these words we find after steadfastly hinges upon that word steadfastly. So uh, we'll be looking at what it means by the Apostles' Doctrine. If you uh, don't have internet access and would like a copy of this booklet that's going to by J. Vernon McGee, uh, you can find it if you have access at ttb.org. You go to the resources link, and it's it's free. It's entitled "The Spiritual Fingerprints of the Visible Church." And if you don't have access to that, and you want a copy of that, it's just a short booklet, and uh, you'd like it to read. If you let me know, I'll try to have some by this evening. If not uh, this evening, then we'll have them uh, Wednesday night. But uh, I also tried to send out that link to the document itself on the, on the remind messages. Uh, is there any other prayer requests or uh, announcements this morning? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Continue to remember Miss Vicky and the, and the girls. Uh, this, up, this week we've been leaning Vicky's uh, 43rd wedding anniversary. And uh, let's uh, continue to remember her and the, and the girls, the whole family. Anybody else? All right. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to uh, 2 Kings. Chapter number six, and we'll read the first seven verses. Second Kings, chapter number six, verses one through seven. Mainly going to be talking about the first two verses, but we'll go ahead and get the idea of what's going on by looking at the first, reading the first seven verses. Now this is uh, the prophet Elisha. Elijah, I think in chapter 2, was caught up by a chariot in a whirlwind. And Elisha has uh, taken his place. And there are a group of uh, what's called in the Bible sons of the prophets that we find here. Uh, Saying there ain't enough room for us, and they want they want to build us build them a new place to be housed at, and that's that's where we're at here, Second Kings chapter six, getting in verse one, and and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. In other words, it's too small. Let us go, we pray thee, into Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe had fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was, it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in hither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and, and took it. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, this morning for your word. Thank you, for Lord, for the opportunity to approach your throne. Lord, on the behalf of these that we've mentioned for prayer, and Lord, you, you know each and every situation, each need 
that's there. And Lord, uh, uh, we thank you for meeting those needs. Thank you, Lord, for uh, visiting with us this morning and with the presence of your Holy Spirit. And if there be one here that's lost, there be one listening to us over Facebook that's lost, we pray that you'll save them today before it's everlasting too late. And Lord, uh, we're going to give you all the honor and glory for everything. And uh, again, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I don't know how many times that I've been out and about and the following scenario happens to me. Uh, either, uh, Steve, I've been nice and let them out at the door or somewhere thereabouts and they go on in and they're seated by the time I get in there. Now, a few times that's happened. Or if I'm going to a ball game and I'm trying to find a seat and I find an empty space, Randy, apparently where the assistant principal has been sitting where there's a big hole, and uh, I go up there to make sure nobody else sits anywhere around there, or, or that used to be the case. Uh, maybe a few people sit by me these, this time, this next time. But uh, when I get seated, I look at all the folks that I just walk right by that I knew, and I just high-headed them, everyone, because I had my mind on something down yonder. This one fella says this, that his mama had this saying for him, and here's how it goes. Son, you're traveling so fast. Don't pass up more than you can catch up with. That'd be something for you to think about. Don't pass up more than you can catch up with. How many times do I go through life, kind of like I just described, and miss opportunities that God has placed in my path because I got my eyes on something else? Same writer apparently must be a, a poet. He says, as we examine the text in some detail, the process is finding out if we have lost the cutting edge and how to recover it. He says, sometimes when the man is not right, God says, grow. Sometimes when the time is not right, God says, slow. Sometimes when, ev when uh, everything is right, God says, go. If you'll turn over with me to uh, Matthew chapter 28 for just a minute. We talk about this time to time. Most of you know that Matthew 28, the last three verses, 18 through 20, describes what we call the Great Commission that Jesus gave to us. Uh, ask you a question. As we've asked the last several times we've discussed this, <clears throat> was this only given to pastors? Or was it given to the church itself? Uh, been watching... Y'all probably getting tired of me saying this. Been watching a lot of videos. Part of the videos I've been watching is uh, Phil Robertson and his family. And uh, each week, maybe sometimes twice a week, they post a video, and it's called Unashamed. Uh, Phil and his two oldest sons, Al and Jace, basically have Bible study, and it usually lasts just in about 52 minutes. Is that about... That's what you told me, I think, one time, that 52 minutes. And that's, uh, that's usually what theirs last. And they talk about this, talk about that. Jace made a point in the latest video about this. When he talks about the church, and he's talking about a building, he puts them two together. 
Because the people are the church. This building here ain't the church. This church building, or as I like to call it, church house. This is where we gather together. So was the Great Commission given to pastors only or was it given to the church as a whole? I'm of the belief it's given to the church as a whole. And whenever I say the word go, we're going to talk about the word go here in just a minute. We'd already talked about it a little bit. I think about the Great Commission. Verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke, spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Some folks say this. The idea here is as we go, because most of us are going to go, whether they say we can't go or not. Even if it's safer at home, most of us are still going to go. Some of us have to go. As we go, what are we supposed to be doing? Teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to notice that all nations. Who did he die for? Was it just for the United States of America? I hope not, because the United States of America is not mentioned in the Bible. Was it just for the nation of Israel? Mm -mm. No. My Bible says that he died for the sins of the whole world. And look at there, what it says there in the Great Commission. Teach all nations. Y'all know there are some nations that hate our guts. We still love them and strive to give the gospel. There's some nations that love us. Well, since they love us, they must be all right. They still need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now, don't you look back with me to Second Kings. We talked a little bit about these sons of the prophets. I want to read to you out of the uh, key word study Bible, a little note about who these sons of the prophets are. They say the phrase sons of the prophets is a reference to the, to the organization of those who were true God-called prophets. And this organization organized them into groups. This was originally done at Gilbeah and Noah, where they were supervised by Samuel. We find that in 1 Samuel 10 and 19. Uh, chapter 10, chapter 19. One such group consisting of 100 prophets was hidden from Jezebel by Obadiah. We learned that in 1 Kings 18. The situation in Gilgal seems to indicate a campus where the prophets resided. In 2 Kings 6, 1 through 4, there's an account of the building of dwelling places for the particular group that Elijah led. But of course, we don't know that in chapter 2, Second Kings, Elijah, God's done took him. And so Elisha has taken over. And so they come to him in verse number one and, and ask uh, a question or tell him, said, the place that we have is too straight in the King James Version or too, in other words, it's too small. There's not enough room for us. It's too small. Now, 
Let me remind you, here's, a, here's your spelling lesson again. It's not T-O small. It's not T-W-O small. It's T-O-O small. A lot of times we use that word too, and sometimes we spell it wrong. Sometimes we spell, try to spell something else and spell that wrong. But when we're talking about too slow, too fast, too much, too long, too short, too soon, too late, too bashful, too loud, too soft, too low, too high, too hot, too cold. We're talking about the same word as it's used there in verse 1. It's too small. There's not enough room for us. Verse 2 says, let us go. Now, uh, we'll get back to that thought here in just a minute. But I want to ask you a question. Now, uh, some of y'all, a bunch of y'all is on Facebook. And y'all have seen what the Campbell family of Mitchelltown are up to these days. They're building a deck. Now, I'm just going to go out on the limb. Now, Justin, I saw that picture of how them holes were dug. But that's, I'm just going to say, because most of us have experience in doing this, that let's say that it wasn't done that way. That, that guy that's a millionaire, so I said he ought to be, he didn't ever invent that little whirly bird that goes on back end of a tractor. And the post hole diggers, they hadn't been invented. So you out there jumping up and down on the shovel. Because both of us have been there. We've had to dig a hole and we've used the shovel. And y'all, when I say jumping up and down on it, y'all know what I'm, most of you that use the shovel know what I'm talking about. What if the shovel broke off? I'm talking about the metal part. How many of us would continue on digging with the handle? Now, it could be done. I used to ask my math students. Now, please nobody answer this question because it is a trick question. And down through the years, I've had a bunch of people to fall for it. Let's say that Justin wanted to dig uh, a hole two foot wide, two foot long, two foot deep. And he could do that by himself in 30 minutes. How long would it take him to dig half a hole? And please nobody say 15 minutes. Because there ain't no such thing as half a hole. Once you got a hole, you got a hole. Now, could be a hole half as big. I didn't say that, though. And down through the years, I've had a lot of guilty people say, 15 minutes. No, I said, how long does it take him to dig half a hole? You can't dig half a hole. So we wouldn't continue on, no matter how much I try to convince you that it can be done with just that shovel handle. Most of us would know that if we can't find the brad that went on there and can't find another one to replace it, we know the trick with the nail head. With the nail, we can drive it through there, bend it up, and we can keep on going. What about a fishing pole? Last time me and Daddy were down fishing at the James Gray Pond, he caught a pretty good-sized bass. And it pulled reel off, it broke the reel off the rod. Did he continue on fishing with the rod? Nope. Could he have? He could have wasted his time. With no line, no bait, they were, I don't think James has got his fish trained enough to jump out into your lap. So that would have been useless. Then I want to ask you about this young fella here that has barred somebody's axe. 
And he's chopping down trees, you know, trying to build him somewhere to live. Because the place they live in is too small. Could he have went on chopping with just a handle? Yes, he could have. How successful would he have been would have been the question. No doubt, as we read this, we've got to realize that a miracle took place this day. He cried out to Elisha, Master, it's borrowed. Elisha said, Where, where'd, it go? where'd it go under at? And let me explain to you, some of us might not have caught the King James Version method of uh, telling about this. But Elisha took a stick, threw it into the River Jordan. The axe, the metal, the iron floated to the top. And he recovered that axe and was able to start chopping wood again. Now, could he have continued on with just a handle? How long would it took him to get a tree down now? Now, I, I believe you can, with a shovel, you'd probably dig with the handle. Take you a while, but I don't know with the handle of an ax. I believe the tree would win that battle without the metal part on the end. Whatever you and I are doing. We need to do it as if we're doing it for the Lord. With all that we've got. Won't you turn over with me to Colossians chapter 3. Verse number 17. In our jobs, in our employment, we've got to be committed. Colossians 3 and verse 17 says this, Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if we can do something half-heartedly in the name of the Lord Jesus, I don't know that we can I don't know that we can. And if our job is to cut down a tree and the axe head is flew off, I hope you and I agree that we need to find that axe head and put it, attach it back to the axe handle. That axe handle ain't going to do much cutting. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, and the Father by Him. So if you'll turn back to 2 Kings chapter 6. Let us go. Verse 2. We pray thee unto the Jordan. Now, how many times throughout the Bible has the Jordan River been referenced? I've read this week that the Jordan River is probably the lowest spot on the earth. You remember when Naaman, a little bit later, comes to Elisha? He gets mad at Elisha because Elisha tells him, first of all, Elisha didn't come out to talk to him. I thought at least he'd come out and talk to me. Elisha don't. Elisha sends somebody out and says, tell him to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman even says this, that river's dirty. 
There's more clean rivers back home. There's cleaner rivers back home. Why can't I go dip in that one? Because God didn't say to. But the man of God gave, gave him the word from the Lord, you go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Six times wasn't good enough. But on that seventh time, his skin was renewed as if nothing had ever been wrong with him. He was a leper. One writer says that the Jordan River has been styled typically as a picture of the man of as a picture of life of man. It starts very small at the melting of the snow capped mountain of Mount Hermon, cascading down the hillside, flowing at the northern end of the Sea of Galilee, reaching full and fruitful maturity in that lovely body of water, then being buried in a liquid grave in what we know of as the Dead Sea. Amy's uncle went to the Holy Land several years ago, and uh, y'all need to Google some pictures of what happens in the Dead Sea. He, he brought back a picture of himself sitting in the Dead Sea. You say, well, big deal. I can go sit in the Tennessee River. You won't be uh, suspended like he was. I'm talking about it was like he was sitting in a chair. He was sitting in the Dead Sea, and it was just holding him up. So, in other words, what, I, what I'm getting out of that is Marty Mosley, who can't swim a lick, could go over there, and that water's going to hold me up. Whence it gets its name, the Dead Sea. So, they're going to go down and build a house by the Jordan River. Same river that Jesus was baptized in. Same river that Peter talks about. Same, as we said, the same river that Naaman dipped in. Let us go down to the Jordan. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go. Wouldn't it be nice when every time God says go, we'd go? Wouldn't it be great that every time he said go, that we went? We, go, we can go all the way back to Abraham. What did God tell him? Go. He told him go. What does it take to get started? we got to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Before we can go, before we can teach, before we can baptize in His name, before we can do anything, we've got to know Him. So before we go, we've got to know the one saying to go. As they said there at the beginning of verse 2, Elisha, let us go. I'm convinced of this, though, that there are some children of God who have no desire to go. They have no desire to go. I've told you all about the Sunday school teacher that I heard say this. I, I did not have, ever have a an opportunity to question about this. I did, I'm just repeating what I heard with my own two ears. And back then my hearing was pretty good. I don't want to be like Paul because I'm afraid God would use me. Turn over with me to Isaiah chapter number 6. Justin will be reading verse number 8. 
But let me tell you about what leads up to that. This is the year that King Uzziah died. Him and Isaiah were pretty tight. They were good friends. And so uh, most of us have lost a friend. And most of us know uh, kind of what, what Isaiah was going through. But he saw a vision of the Lord high and lifted up. And there were some seraphims there. I believe they was an, they're angels they're describing there. And when I, Isaiah saw the glory of God, he said, Woe is me, for I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. And one of the seraphim came with a live coal and placed it upon Isaiah's mouth and said this, uh, Your uh, lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Then we get down to verse 8. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now, before that instance, Isaiah might not have had the want to. See, the Lord done cleaned him up. The angel done came, touched his lips with that coal from the furnace and told him, your iniquity is taken from you. I want to remind you about something. Now, we could spend an eternity of thinking about talking about, dwelling upon what all happened the day we were saved. I'm going to remind you about something. One of the things that happened was your sin was taken away. I want to remind you about our struggle through the book of Mark. Did we run into some folks that he said that he did a miracle for that he said, go and tell? Yeah. But there were a few occasions that he told them, don't tell. And I can't think of it right now. I cannot think of a time when he said, don't tell, that they didn't go out and tell everybody. And you remember the contrast we did to our life. We read in Matthew chapter 28. Go ye therefore, teach, baptize, Teach them to do all things I've commanded you. I've showed you. Lo, I'm with you always, even in the world. We've read Acts 1 and verse 8. You shall be witnesses for me. So we're told to tell everybody. Who do we tell? Found a lot of people, several people in the book of Mark that was told to tell nobody. They told everybody. And we're told to tell everybody who we tell. Too often it's nobody. Oh, we got the goal in mind. We, we're going to heaven. Who are we taking with us? Who will go for us? We go around this room this morning and we could uh, ask the folks on Facebook to chime in and we probably be here a while of folks that we have on our hearts that we'd like to get say, see get saved or we would like to see them have a closer walk with the Lord we, it would take a while because when we got done in the physical room here we'd start reading what people posted on Facebook and we'd be here a while Saw a post the other day. This lady, I don't know who in the world she is from anybody, but it was on my page and uh, on Twitter. And here's what she said. My pastor is taking my lost husband out to eat lunch today. Pray that my husband gets saved today. Now, I'm going to have to dig around and try to follow up on that, see if she posted any, any happenings. Who 
who will go for us? Are we willing to go? You say, where are we loading up and going to? I'm going to remind you about what we said in Matthew 28. As you go, when you go, take the gospel with you. Who are you supposed to share it with? I think we made it pretty plain. Everybody, all nations. Some of y'all can still sing yes by heart. Some of you's taught it to folks. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Do you really believe that? Or is that just a song we teach our children? I don't even know if they still teach that or not. It was taught to me. Do we believe that? Do we believe that's real? Do we believe that's true? Or is it just one race? We'd still be reading Matthew 28 if it said all nations except. Who'll go for us? Isaiah, who'd just been cleaned up, his iniquity taken from him, said, Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Who'll go? Here am I. Send me. Now, they came to the man of God and said, Can we? Let us go. Can we? Let us go. Can, can we go? Let us go. And what does that word, what did he say? Go. You remember what we read later on? Will you go with us? Now, I want to ask you a question. Where have you been lately, child of God, that the Lord wasn't with you? Where have you been when the Lord were, was not with you? And let me remind you what Matthew 28 says. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you just every once in a while. And lo, I am with you always. So where have you been lately when God wasn't with you? If you're a child of God, you ain't been nowhere lately. If you're safer at home, if you're safer on the road, if you got a mask on, you ain't got a mask on. A child of God hadn't been anywhere that God wasn't with them. So when he tells us to go, we don't have to ask them what they ask Elisha. Marty, go. Well, God, will you go with me? Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Some folks like John Madden might use that to say, I don't never get on the airplane because it says, Lo, I'm with you always. Well, he's with you low, he's with you high, and everywhere in between, even until the end of the world. Sometimes, Even when we're doing our finest work, the brook may dry up. I want to remind you about Elijah. He was, do, he was where God told him to be, doing what God told him to do. God was feeding him. He was drinking water from that brook, and one day the brook dried up. But what did God tell him? 
go. Where'd he go? He went to that widow woman who was fixing to make a last meal for her and her son. What did Elijah say? Make for me first. How long was he there? He was where there was spell, and she still had plenty to eat. The oil didn't go dry. The flour, the meal didn't waste. But God said go. And he went. You say, well, what about an example when they didn't go? I don't want to be in the belly of a whale, do y'all? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Uh-uh. Matter of fact, he went the opposite direction. Ended up in the belly of a whale. And you can tell me all you want to that scientist so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, and what's his face and what's her face said that that couldn't have happened. The Bible said it did. And when that whale got through with him, spit him up on dry ground, I don't believe he could have got to Nineveh any quicker. When God says go, are we willing? Are we able? If he saved us, we are. The Lord needed somebody to die for Marty Mosley's sin. I believe Jesus said, I'll go. I'll do it. What's, been, what's God been calling you to do in your life? What's God been calling me to do in my life? that we ain't doing. He says go. And he's with us as we go. Where have we been when God, when God hadn't been there? We can't name a place. Sometime when you got time, read Psalm 139. David declared this, there's nowhere we can go to hide from him. He says, go. I'm glad Jesus went, ain't you? And he went all the way. He finished the task. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Later on, when I put this on YouTube, I'm liable to get flagged. Last time I got flagged again, I didn't tell y'all about that. Somebody in Singapore gets money for a song that we put on there while we was in quarantine. And uh, they flagged it again. But this time I didn't cut it out. I just let it stay. I guess I don't need to go to Singapore. God calls us to salvation. And he says, come. I want to ask you today, have you came to him? In our walk as a Christian, many, many times, he says, go. Sometimes we have that desire and say, let us go. And he says, go. And are we going to be alone? In no way are we going to be alone. In no way are we going to be alone. So when that command comes to go, are we going to go? I want to ask you about this. There's a day coming when God's going to look at Jesus and says, go get him. Are you going with him that day? Are you going with him that day? The only way we can go with him on that day is to know him as our Lord and Savior. Amen. 
God says go. I'm never going to leave you, never going to forsake you. I'm going to be with you always until the end of the world. Go. Who's going to go for us? He said, asked Isaiah. Here am I. Send me. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this example we find in 2 Kings chapter 6, Lord, that they were told to go. And they did. And uh, work was started. Work had to be finished. Lord, you had to perform a miracle that day for the work to be finished. But eventually they finished the work. Lord, as you say, go in our life. Help us to remember that you're going with us. We ain't going alone. Help us know that you'll be there to strengthen us, to give us the words to say. But Lord, as we've done said, is sometimes you say go, but the initial call you placed on our life was to come Lord if there's any listening to, the, to us today here or over Facebook or wherever that has not have not come to you yet save them Lord before it's everlasting too late and Lord uh, be with us today as, during this song of invitation time and you have your way in each one of our lives we thank you in Jesus name amen we'll say Goodbye to our Facebook friends. We hope you visit us again uh, this evening at 6 o'clock.